Welcome to part two of applications of first order differential equations involving exponential decay. In part one, we discussed how the differential equation dp dt equals k times p, or p prime of t equals k times p of t, models exponential decay, which means the rate of decay or decline is proportional to the population or amount and nothing else. So the change of p with respect to t is equal to some constant k times our function p. And because we have decay, k is going to be negative. And in part one, we actually solved this differential equation to find p of t, which we found to be p of t equals p sub zero times e raised to the power of kt, where p sub zero is the initial amount, k is the decay rate, t is the time, and p of t is the amount after time t. And now that we know this function satisfies the differential equation to model exponential decay, we're going to use this to solve a second problem. So a certain radioactive material decays at a rate proportional to the amount present. At time t equals zero, there are 50 milligrams. After two years, 20% has decayed. We want to find an equation to model this decay. We want to know how much is left after five years, and then what is the half-life of this material. So let's start with part A by finding the equation that would model this decay. So to find the equation to model this decay, we're going to use this exponential function to determine the value of k. So let's take a look at the given information first. We know at time t equals zero, there are 50 milligrams of material, so that means p of zero equals 50. After two years, 20% has decayed. This does not mean k is equal to negative 20% or negative 0.2. That means that p of two is going to be equal to 20% less than 50, which means 80% would remain. So this would be 50 times 0.8, which would give us 40 milligrams. So p of two is equal to 40 milligrams. So now we should be able to find k by using p of zero equals 50 and p of two equals 40 and our exponential function, which we know to model exponential decay. If p of zero equals 50, then p sub zero is 50. And if p of two equals 40, we can substitute two for t and p of t with 40. So we'd have the equation 40 equals 50 times e raised to the power of k times two or two k. Again, this is telling us that we're starting with 50 milligrams. After two years, when t is two, we have 20% less or 40 milligrams. Now that we only have one unknown, we can solve for k. So we'll divide both sides by 50. 40 divided by 50 would be 0 0.8 equals e to the power of two k. We want to solve this for k. So now we'll take the natural log of both sides of the equation and apply the power property of logarithms here. So now we have the natural log of 0 0.8 must equal 2k times natural log e, but natural log e is equal to one. So to solve for k, we just divide by two. Remember, k is supposed to be negative because we have exponential decay. So now we'll go to the calculator. So we have natural log 0.8 divided by two. Let's go ahead and round this to five decimal places. So k is going to be approximately negative 0 0.11157. So the exponential equation that would model this decay would be p of t equals 50, the initial amount, times e raised to the power of negative 0 0.11157 times t, which also means we could use the differential equation dp dt equals negative 0 0.11157 times p to model this exponential decay. But this question is only asking us for this function here. Now we can use this equation to answer the two remaining questions. Now we want to know how much is left after five years, which means t is equal to five. 
So we'll substitute phi for t and evaluate the function. P of five is equal to fifty times e raised to the power of negative zero point one 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 five seven times five. And we'll go back to the calculator. So fifty times e raised to the power of negative zero point one 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 five seven times five. Close parenthesis, press enter, and we have approximately 28.6 milligrams. Hopefully that makes sense because remember after two days we had 40 milligrams, so after five days we should have significantly less. And then for the last question, they want us to find the half-life of this material, which is the time it takes for half of the material to decay or decompose. So using our exponential function, we could start with any initial amount. Let's go ahead and keep it consistent and use 50 for p sub zero. Well, half of 50 would be 25. So to find the half-life, we need to solve the equation 25 equals 50 times e raised to the power of negative 0 0.11157 times t. So to do this, we'll first divide by 50 to isolate the exponential part. Notice on the left side we have one half, which is always the case for half-life. Regardless of how much we start with, this amount here would always be half, therefore giving us one half on the left side of the equation equals e raised to the power of negative 0 0.11157 times t. We want to solve this for t, so now we can take the natural log of both sides of the equation and apply the power property of logarithms here. So we can move this exponent to the front so it's the coefficient of natural log e. So we have natural log one half equals negative zero point one 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 five seven t times natural log e, but natural log e is equal to one. So now we just divide by our decimal which is k. and this will give us our approximate half-life. So natural log one-half or natural log point five divided by our k value which is negative point one 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 five seven. So the half-life is approximately six point two years. Now there is a shortcut to find half-life when we have exponential decay. I showed this in part one, I'll show it again. We can find the half-life, if we call it capital T, by taking natural log one-half and dividing by k. But of course we can always just set up and solve a similar equation as we did here. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.